what the hell is going on? I shaved my mustache, all right? Because I was like, there's there's no more drama. There, there can't be any more drama, possibly. And then, and then, Braxophone posts this. And I have to talk about it because this is kind of crazy. Listen, I did a whole video talking about the drama. And I said, I don't want to talk about the drama anymore. I don't like the drama anymore. But it has gotten to another level that I have to talk about the goddamn drama. Is this... This is interesting. This is very interesting. Let me get started, okay? I think that in my video, if we look at my uh, my good old video here that I just posted, um, I talked about the community imploding, all right? And then I went back and I made a little review of Black Swan. I tried to move on really quickly, but here we are. Now, I discussed the community exploding, and uh, I kind of called out Tectone. I said, you know what? Tectone, uh, sometimes I think, is a, is a bit of a, a problem causer he makes a lot of drama videos he calls people out he throws little cheap shots and um the other side of the genshin community they're never going to forgive him they throw cheap shots back it's this it's this ruined thing but with some of the claims that braxophone is making it's a little interesting it adds a little spice to the pot and i want to discuss this all right so he said TLDR, Atsu hates me. I don't know why. Atsu spreads hate of me to other creators and industry professionals, and I don't know why. Atsu uses other people to climb the social ladder. I'll debate on this one because I think it's just potentially some creator stuff, but he makes that comment. Atsu is coming after me and my friends in the open now, and I'm tired of it. I just want to be left alone and not have my career tampered with. This is interesting, and uh, potentially... If you look at this, how you want to look at it, if someone came to my KFC, all right, I'm selling chicken, and um, someone is shouting, by the way, they've got rats in the kitchen, and I lose business, and there isn't rats in the kitchen, that is slander. That is something I could sue them for, right? If someone was to persuade a company to say, Mtash should be blacklisted, uh, do not work with him, and then they don't. Hypothetically, that is slander. They have impacted my ability to make money with the words they've said, even if they aren't true. And the way Braxophone talks about this, it is like, hmm, this is, this is interesting. Now, I don't want to read this thing word for word. I would love for you to read it yourself before I even give my take. Optimally, that's how you would do it. But I want to summarize a few things here. The quick and dirty is Braxophone, maybe a little bit more of an awkward guy, uh, has some interactions with Atsu. It starts out pretty good. The next one, they seem a little off. It doesn't seem right. They're not really making eye contact. Things look weird. And then eventually it erupts to the point where um, he can tell, Braxophone can tell, something's off here. Something isn't going on here. Uh, it seems they don't like me. Now, Braxophone's been making guides, doing well. Uh, overall, has been invited to some events, obviously. Or, unless he's just showing up to these events. I I'm assuming he is getting invited by Hoyoverse in some capacity. But I, I don't think it says anywhere here. So, Braxophone, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to call it out here, too. If you were showing up to all these big Genshin events, and you weren't flown out by Hoyo, and you're just showing up, and you're like, hey guys, I'm here, that would be why Atsu and them probably started being like, what's going on? If I was flown out to Seattle for a Destiny event, and then all these other smaller creators just like showed up at the bar, and they weren't flown out by Bungie, it would be kind of like, yo, why, uh, why are they here? Like, what's, what's going on? It's, it, it's a little weird. So unless you were flying out there and infiltrating these places, then... You're, you're chilling. And, and, and if, if Hoyo flew you out or, or you're going there on their dime or whatever it is, then there's no reason for them to be weird with you or be awkward. But I just want to, I want to talk about this point here first because I don't know every single detail and I want to, I want to look at the layers here. But um, I, early on in my career, I tried to email people and, and do collaborations. And one of my good friends, I'll bring up his channel here, uh, Mr. Fruit, Mr. Fruit. Uh, I love this guy. I used to watch his videos, and Mr. Fruit has been a huge channel. He was a lot bigger than me. I wanted to collaborate with Mr. Fruit, 
And um, he got so annoyed with me that I was asking him to collab. And I'm just like, ah, we, I, I, we could do this stuff. Eventually, he just blocked me. He just ignored me. He's like, I can't do this. I was a small creator. I had no following. And I don't blame him because it's kind of like, my guy, you've got no audience. You don't have any views. Like, you, it, it seems like you're just trying to use me or leech off me. And I get that. Eventually, we met in person, and he realized how sweet I am, and we became really good friends. But I don't think that that's an inappropriate reaction. When some person just starts emailing you and like, hey, let's hang out, let's, let's do this stuff, it, it's, it's a little weird. And I did it with my buddy Dado, too. Uh, Dado, I'm like trying to befriend Dado. I'm like, we can make videos together. And it's like, my guy, you got two videos and, and zero viewers, like... There wasn't really a, a place for me to collab with them at that time because I wasn't even really a creator. I, I I didn't have any skills. I was like emailing them before I was even a YouTuber. Now, if I look at this stuff and I look at what he's saying, unless he was degen level conversation, I think anyone can pick up, hey, this guy's a little awkward. But I don't think anyone for the most part would would recognize hey this this guy's a little awkward and then go to the levels that it's gone he mentions that they met a few times first time was weird then there's a little bit of a lack of eye contact but each time that they met things got weird now i want to mention this post this moment right here there's something to do with a creepy voice actor and someone kind of warns Brax about this voice actor. And so I don't know what this means exactly, but essentially like the Tainari guy, let's just say the Tainari guy who got fired. Maybe that person is creepy, right? And in one of the conversations with Atsu, he kind of warns him about that voice actor. I'm not saying the exact one. I don't know who it is, but Atsu's kind of like, okay, that's kind of weird. Why are you bringing this up? And that is a bit of a weird interaction, if I'm being honest. Like, it's kind of like, a, why are you telling me this? Like, hey, I just want to tell you that that other YouTuber kind of creepy. It does seem a little bit manipulative if that's one of your first interactions of like, why are you trying to drop this tea on me? I don't even really know you, right? So absolutely, that could be a trigger that causes some of this stuff. Um, so I, I want to play both sides here of like, maybe Brax innocent, but also Brax maybe understand where some of this is coming from uh, as well. Now, they go to some other events and some of the creators are there, and he mentions Dish right in the middle there. Super nice. Joshua, really nice overall, and um, things are fine. But they take a picture together. Dish invites him in. He wasn't just lurking in the background like, hello, everyone, I'm Braxophone. He was invited by Dish to take the picture. But then after that picture... Atsu's like, all right, let's do it. Let's do another one without this guy specifically. And then I've seen like I've seen the posted video or like the posted image uh, on Twitter and Brax isn't in there. And so I can understand like, hey, I really want like an intimate photo with my friends. But it's also like, hey, I want a photo with all these creators, but not Braxophone. That is a deliberate choice. That is a business decision as well, potentially. And it goes on where he's like, I'm not sure why it was this way. Like, I don't know where this tension came from. Was it from the conversations? Atsu's never officially said. He eventually breaks down and says, I got to just DM this person. I got to ask him. And he does leak the DMs. All right. And he said, hey, can we have a chat? And he's like, what's up? And he's like, yo, I saw your post um, on your alternate account about not normalizing, needing to be friends with everyone. And that's fair. It's like, keep your circle tight. You don't want to be friends with everyone. There's a lot of people that are colleagues. Some of the people you work with or you go to school with, you're not best friends. You'll never be best friends. And that's okay. You don't have to be best friends with everyone. But again, Brax is a little bit anxious. He sees that tweet and he's like, okay, well, obviously that's about me. And he asks him about it. He calls him out on it. He asks him and he says, Brax, I don't consider to be on bad terms with you, but I do keep you at an arm's length. Um, simply because I don't really know you that well, and I found it a bit uncomfortable how eager you came across to befriend me. Okay. I can understand that, and I can relate a little bit. I think I did that to some people early on in my career. When you see other successful people, sometimes you also want to be part of that. You want to be friends with them. It's like, hey, like, I'm a YouTuber too. Like, we're kind of colleagues, right? And you don't have to be friends, but... If you have similar interests and similar goals and a similar job, 
like, wouldn't you at least want to try? And and wouldn't you want to at least give someone the benefit of the doubt for trying? And even if your first interaction or two were a little off, if you got to know them, maybe that would change. And I want to give you a great example of that. And I've told this to uh, my boy in the past. My buddy Cacus HD. My first couple interactions with Cacus, um, I was like not the biggest fan. Um, for some reason, I just I felt like we clashed a little bit, and I, I felt like we were kind of roasting each other a little too early, and we just didn't get along. And I, I was kind of like, I don't really want to go to dinner with him, even though we're at this event. Like he can come, but I'm being honest. My first impression, the first day, was like, eh, I don't know. But after talking with him for just a short period of time, I started to realize, no, this guy's actually pretty sweet. And now he is like one of my best friends. We went to the cabin together. We went to the mountains together. We, we really have gotten close. So sometimes your first impression is wrong. And so it is a very interesting thing here. Maybe Brax is awkward as fuck. Like maybe he's the most awkward person I've ever seen. But I also have met him in person. And my impression was like, oh, this is a cool dude. Like, there's no part of me that was like, what the hell? This guy's a freaking weirdo. Because you can kind of tell. You can kind of tell if they're, like, standing in the corner, like, um, I would like to talk to you. Because I've run into those people at TwitchCon and stuff like that. And I hate to say it, but, like, some people are, are so awkward that it's, like, this tension. There's this buildup. I never got that from Brax. And maybe he was like that in the past, but... Atsu's saying here, I wanted to keep you at an arm's length. I didn't get a good vibe from you. I felt it uncomfortable that you wanted to befriend me. And it's like, can you blame him, Atsu? Look at all your cool friends. You're all laughing. It seems like you're all really close. Can you blame him for, like, wanting to maybe join into that group? Or if he is being flown out by Hoyoverse as well? Like, isn't it kind of awkward that it's like, well, we've got our one click, and we're all flown out by Hoyo, but you can't come. Can you understand how that would be a little bit stressful for Brax as well? It'd be like, what, what, why is everyone else friends and I'm just like this loser over here? You know what I mean? And so he, he goes on to say, um, while I would like to elaborate more, I can't say in good faith that I trust you to respect certain degrees of privacy or to keep things truly confidential. I don't think you're a bad person, but also I don't think I can really vibe with you on a friend level. Now, if you don't want to vibe on a friend level, that's fine. But also, uh, I don't think anyone would want to leak something like this. Ever. If someone just said, yeah, man, like, I, I just think you're super awkward. I don't want to be friends with you at all. No one is going to leak that. That's embarrassing, and that hurts. And to say, I don't trust you. I don't trust the, the confidentiality of this stuff. This is a pretty big... Red flag. It's, it's kind of like, yo, uh, why are you so mad, bro? Almost, you know? And so I'm looking at this, and I, I obviously can only get one side of it. But even Atsu's response is, like, a little bit harsh. If Kakis on day one was like, hey, like, do you want to hang out after? I'd be like, uh, honestly, no. <laughs> I want to go to bed. I don't really want to hang out with you. But I wouldn't be like, and I don't trust you. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know how you're going to sewer me, but I will not even consider getting to know you. You know, like, it does seem a little harsh. And so did he hear something from someone else? Where is this coming from? I would love to hear the other side. I need to hear the other side. I Please, I want to have the other side. But this is a really odd thing. And so this happens. He talks to some friends. He's unsure what to do. He's in a catch-22 of like, I kind of want to tell people about this because it feels odd. I feel very, like, um, ostracized from this community, from these people, and I don't exactly know why, and I want to ask people, why am I ostracized? Why don't they like me? But then I'm breaking the trust, and so it's like, I don't, I don't know what to do here. And then finally, he, he, he breaks, and he asks a couple people, and they're like, yeah, we did hear that about you. You can't be trusted. And it's like, whoa, where and why? Why exactly, right? It's a confusing thing, but there's other meetups that are going on, and he's essentially blacklisted from these meetings. There's an Atsu birthday party. They're going to all these different events and cons. They're going out for dinners, and he's just not invited. Now, I don't know at this point, is he still being flown out by Hoyoverse, and then this group is just doing other activities without him? 
or is Braxophone flying out to the Philippines and going to the con there or, or, or all these different things? I don't know for sure. Um, so, so I can't speak on that. But if he's being flown up by Hoyoverse and then they're still doing all these events, but he's just not invited, it's a that's a very weird thing. Like, it's a very weird precedent. I've been flown out for multiple different games. I've been to conventions. And it's like, if they fly you out, you're with the group. You're going to dinner. It's it, They take care of you. They're feeding you. You're getting hotels and paid. And, like, it's it's a thing. They wouldn't fly you out to the event and be like, yeah, everyone, let's go out for dinner. Except you, Braxophone. <laughs> you, you know, like, that is bizarre. That is, that is psycho. So I don't understand why this is happening, but he mentions multiple times there's events going on, creators are going, but he isn't invited. Now, I would say neither was I. I, I wasn't invited. I, I, I've never been to a Genshin event. These guys are going to symphonies and, and orchestra stuff. I'm not going. And so I'm blacklisted too, but I'm not going to fly out while they're all going to dinner and be like, I wasn't invited. I, I, I just know I'm not welcome. I, I, I know I'm not. So I would love more context on all this stuff officially. But looking at all of this stuff, it does seem that he's so ostracized and people are saying like, yeah, he's, he's not welcome. But then there's a moment where he says in here that, that Joshua kind of says, I went to bat for you. And someone actually said that to me. And I'm not going to leak it because I don't give a shit at this point. But another creator said that to me. I went to bat for you. For what? Why? To who? To Hoyoverse? Did, did, you, go to, did you go to bat for me for Hoyoverse? Or did you go to bat for me for Atsu? Now, that being said, I have talked to Atsu. And one of the times when I was complaining about the creator server, Atsu did reach out and be like, hey, I, I don't know what I could do, but I I'll at least poke the bear. And it did get things moving, and I, and I got to talk to someone. And so Atsu did help me out. Uh, or it, it led to someone reaching out eventually. And so for whatever reason, like I've, I've run into Atsu a couple times and, and I, I saw him at TwitchCon and, and we took a picture together and, and he never posted. I never posted it. It's, it's no one's business, but you know, I saw him, I saw a lot of them and I am like blacklisted, like, like Hoyoverse hates me. And they were still like relatively nice to me overall. And that was cool and all. But I never got a vibe from them that like I'm I'm like this evil person. It's kind of like, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, we know you're blacklisted, like nod in the distance. But they didn't try to avoid me. I said hi to all of them and they were all really nice. The only one I didn't get to see was Dish, who I actually wanted to say uh, hello to and, and be like, hey, what's going on, Dish? Uh, and I didn't get to see Zaya or sorry, Enviosity either, because I don't know what Envy looks like. And um, I also didn't want to like. Even if I did, it's like I, I wouldn't want to like put that out there or like be like yo envy and then someone hears it and it, it you know i think that that's a very risky thing because uh people that don't show their face like they do that for a reason they they want to be um you know on their own and and all that stuff so i don't know it's really hard looking at this stuff to understand all of all of this um and, and the interactions i i've had with this group of people like for the most part have been overall positive other than the very beginning um few months of genshin where I do feel that um, I was ostracized myself and, and kind of painted as a bad guy. And I know that I, I you know, I, I, I get why some of it happened, but like some of it, it felt like, well, I didn't, I wasn't rude to you guys. I never trolled you creators or said anything about you guys, but you guys are like really talking shit about me. That's, that's kind of the vibe I got early on. And then everyone chilled out for the most part and, and it's been fine, but um, whatever. Now, he talks about this stuff, and, and, and I don't really agree with this stuff, or, or like, I don't want to get into this too much, but he kind of makes comments about collaborating with other people, and it does way better than his other content, and how um, he's a bit of a ladder climber, and it seems like he's collaborating with all these people, he's handpicking all these people uh, to grow all their brands together, getting everyone sponsored by Hoyaverse, he's a bit of a ringleader, and it's like, that's a big claim, and I mean, collaborations do lead to more views, and that's... A smart thing to do and i mean i i don't know i i don't think that this is like this like super evil thing or anything like that um 
or, you know, I, I just don't want to get into this as uh, anything, but the one thing I'll say about the comments about the ladder climbing and the sponsorship to the Hoyoverse is like, again, if someone is a ringleader who's causing the sponsorships to happen or causing you to get blacklisted, like that could be a scary thing that does impact your revenue and all these things. If, if, if one of those people that works with them goes to Hoyoverse and says, you cannot trust Braxophone, he's worse than Tectone and Emtashed and he doesn't get sponsored. Like, is that, that, that is like a crazy, powerful thing. And rightfully so, um, Braxophone was worried about that. And he didn't talk out about a lot, a lot of this stuff, but he finally said, screw it. I'm going to talk about it. Um, all, you know, right now. And then he moves on and he talks about this and he says that, um, I don't really know. I, I don't really have any personal problem. Uh, oh, sorry. This is the Joshua thing. He said, I went to bat for you. Uh, I don't have any problems with you, but you know, Atsu. So it's kind of like Atsu is, is like the leader. And if, if he doesn't like you, we, we're not really allowed to like you, which is, it's kind of weird. It's like, are you your own person or not? Or are you scared of Atsu as well? It's it's weird. But um, he goes on down here, and and I, I didn't know who he was talking about in this situation. But it's uh, it was a message from Atsu to Tectone. And it says here, If you're reading this, Tectone, and your source for some of these claims you are making happens to be a guide maker that bears a personal grudge against me, please be aware you are likely being manipulated. Maybe it's not who I think it is. But I'm certain you know who I'm referring to, so stay vigilant. My di uh, DMs are open. And maybe he's not referring to Braxophone, but Braxophone thinks he's referring to Brax. And if that is the case, does Atsu think so little of Braxophone that he would manipulate Tectone into hating Atsu? That he would manipulate Tectone into thinking that all of those people are bad because Brax had a bad experience with them. And so either it was way, way, way worse than Brax is letting on, and he was like a savage creep, like the weirdest guy you've ever met. He was like slapping asses and just being this, this like a freak. Or Atsu uh, it may be overreacting here, and I need, I need to see his side of it. I, I have to understand this from his side, or else for me, I'm looking at it and I'm going, something is awry. Something smells a little fishy here, and I don't know what it is. Never mind, I know what it is. But um, it's, it's, it's a little bit weird. Like, hey, DM me. DM me, because if it's Braxophone, you can't trust that guy. Why? Why can't we trust Brax so much? Why is he such a, a, a black-listed person? I, I don't understand fully, based on what I've read. Um... In reality, the manipulation is coming from Atsu, telling Tectone to DM him. I still don't know what any of this is about. And so either, again, Brax is just completely unaware, he doesn't, he, he's, he's just completely socially unaware, or it is, it is such an egregious, like, like, contrast of what should be, like, like the relationship they should have. Atsu hates him so much that Braxophone is like, I literally don't understand what's wrong. And I'm I'm gonna guess it's usually the more common thing. I think I think based on my interaction with Braxophone, he was a, he was a seemingly normal dude. Um, so my guess is there's some overreaction here or like misinterpretation or labeling that's going on from that group towards Brax, and I don't know why. But um. Yeah, it's just, he, he talks about just being afraid to do this, how he feels ostracized from the community, um, all these different things, and he just, you know, finally said, like, I'm gonna just do it. Um, Jake said, and I quote, I know for a fact that he does not want to talk to you. I also asked a Hoyo staff uh, that I know has worked with both of us in the past if they could connect us in some way, and he said, uh... To fix the he said, she said disaster, but they were unsuccessful in opening a dialogue. So it's kind of like this, like, um, he's cut off. He can't fix it. He's He wants to reach out to fix it. And it's it's almost like if he reaches out to fix it, Atsu's like, oh, here he goes again, trying to contact me. And then and then just, like, blacklists him even harder and just, like, pushes him away even harder. 
and and so it's almost like that like that ex girlfriend or that ex that's like please take me back and Atsu's like no no I uh, I don't want anything to do with you. It's it's bizarre. It really is bizarre. And he's been fostering this for a while, hasn't said anything about it, and I don't know what to say. It, it's a pretty big claim, and I mean, I don't know. I've been blacklisted for a long time. I know that it's because I critique the game. Like, let's be honest, it's a Chinese company. Maybe there's some CCP stuff going on there. Um, I got banned from the Discord, all these different things. As soon as I started talking about the game, the other thing too is like, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I noticed this and I tracked this because it, it seemed very weird. If you look at my channel and my YouTube views and you look at my Twitch views, my YouTube views stayed very solid overall. I went free to play. And if you look at the comments on my discussion about going free to play, uh, everyone was pretty damn hyped. People were like, yo, he's starting over free to play. This is badass. You're a badass. Most of the comments on my Klee trilogy, there's definitely some trolling stuff. But a lot of the comments on my videos are actually really positive. They're like, yo, free to play God. This is sick. This is amazing. But as soon as I got banned from the Discord, which was shortly after critiquing the game and critiquing the monetization, my viewership on Twitch tanked. I went from some of my peaks of 15,000 viewers, and I know that's because I was spending money. I know that was because I was spending money. I went from 15,000 viewers on crazy streams and like six, 7,000 views on a lot of them down to like 1,000. And I was looking around and I'm going, hmm, this is odd. This is, this is very odd. My last video, 800,000 views, is doing incredible. All my videos I was posting popping off, but for some reason, my Twitch audience started to fall apart. I posted my first few free-to-play God videos, and they did amazing. But for some reason, my Twitch still not really recovering. Maybe there was... I mean, this is a big claim, and this has nothing to do with Atsu, but maybe there was some view botting going on in that uh, game. People were view botting uh, the Genshin channels to push it up in the directory and make it more popular. The second I pissed them off, my views tanked. Now, Tectone didn't tank as much. He's done really well. And so maybe I'm just looking into it, but it was a very odd coincidence seeing the positive reception versus what ended up happening shortly after. And so... I've been blacklisted. I've been ostracized from the community or from, from like Hoyoverse for a long time. And at TwitchCon, there was a little bit of a reconciliation. But honestly, I'm probably out again because I thought that ZZZ wasn't this like amazing thing and, and I wasn't the nicest about my review. So I'm guessing I'm probably out. Um, I can message them and ask kind of what their thoughts are, but I'm not in the creator servers. I, 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 I'm not flown out to any events i've never been paid by them i have no uh connections or, or anything with hoyoverse and um i don't think that's because of atsu i don't think it's because of his crew and i've had good relationships with them overall but uh, well passable relationships. I, I don't think good relationships i have hardly even talked to most of them um but there's no like negative bad blood out there but it's also because it's like i don't want to talk to them in case me being blast blacklisted like like ruins their careers like ruins their thing they've got going on and so it's it's more to protect them than anything because i understand that maybe associating with me could hurt them so yes i am a martyr i'm a saint <laughs> i'm the free to play god but uh i don't know it's just it's just it's so weird i would love to see atsu's side of this i would love to see their side of this or, or just explain <clears throat> what happened in detail they don't have to but i, I would love a response because this is this is crazy and uh i don't know this whole community is just like i don't know maybe there maybe there was like more to this than i thought maybe maybe there is uh there are some some dark dark players in play uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the hand that's been dealt was a little bit nefarious from the dealer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Kind of like a, like an anime or something, <laughs> you know? I don't know.